Okay, guys, let's talk about right-hand rule number two. Right-hand rule number two predicts the north pole of an electromagnet. So let's take a look at our lab table here. We've got a steel bolt, like so. It is galvanized, so it is, has a little zinc coating on it, but I assure you it's steel, a requirement to make an electromagnet, steel or iron. A pretty good horseshoe magnet with the north pole clearly pointed out with the white tape on it, marking the north pole of that magnet. We're going to need that a little later. And of course, a red wire plugged into DC current carrying positive charge. So you'll notice the wire is red positive, and you can see, of course, it's plugged into our DC power supply there. All right, now it's a steel nail. You have to trust me on it because I think that proves that it's iron or steel. And that's this is a pretty big blue here is a pretty impressive electromagnet. And we're going to put this off to the side. We're going to use this for right hand rule number three in just a little bit. OK, back to right hand rule number two. So we have the the head of this bolt and we have the threads OK, on the shank here. All right. So we're going to take our wire, which is positive charge plugged into a DC power supply or the positive terminal of a battery. And we're going to just start to wrap the wire around the, the nail or the bolt in this case and as such. Okay. Now, when we, if there's current running through this, this in fact is an electromagnet. Now let me do a little nicer job wrapping these windings around. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's a little nicer job here. I'm trying to keep these windings nice and there we go, tight and clean. Okay, let's pretend, if you will, that there is positive current running through this red wire from over here, our DC power supply. Well, right hand, fingers extended and joined, thumb perpendicular, you follow the positive flow. You'll notice on the left side of this bolt, the positive feed goes up and over the bolt. So my thumb would point left. For my fingers, four fingers to represent these four windings, one, two, three, four, up and over the top, my thumb would have to point left. This left side here would be the end pole, the north pole of this homemade electromagnet. Okay, and if we wind it in a different fashion, we take the windings off and we start winding this way. Uh, let's go underneath the other side here and we wind it like so. Whoop, whoop, we got to stay plugged in to our power supply and we wind it like so. Now we have a different situation here. Wind, 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 and then the wire disappears. Okay, now. Here comes our positive flow over the bolt, but this time we notice that the positive flow goes underneath on the right side. Taking our right hand, fingers extended and joined, thumb perpendicular, we follow the positive flow underneath the right side and our thumb points to the right. This is now the North Pole, the right side of the electromagnet. Okay, I'm going to make sure I don't turn the carriage fault orientation, and I'm going to rewind it one more time as we did in the original with the carriage bolt head to your right. But this is how we wound it the first time. Okay, with the positive flow going up over the left side. Here's our positive flow from the power supply. You'll notice on the left hand side of the magnet, the threaded end that the positive flow goes up and over, thumb extends pointing towards the left end, and now the left end of this magnet, this being the positive feed, this being the positive feed going up and over, that's important that you see, the positive feed is going up, coming in here, and going up and over on the left side, thumb points left when you follow that positive flow. My thumb points left following the positive flow. The threaded end would now be the north pole of this electromagnet. Follow the positive flow. Thumb points to the north pole. If we turn the configuration like so, 
this is still the positive feed. Follow underneath now, and the threaded end is once again the north pole of the electromagnet. Nothing has changed. We flip the magnet in its entirety. This continues to be the end pole, the north pole magnet. Right hand rule number two predicting the north pole of an electromagnet. Okay, guys, what does right hand rule number two look like on paper? Right hand rule number two. Right hand rule number two predicts the north pole of a, an electromagnet. So let's say we have an iron nail. Here's the head of the nail. There's the point that you don't want to step on. And now we take our red positive wire. Here's our positive from the power supply. And the red wire goes up and over as such. And then the last turn comes down and underneath. Well, which of these would be the end pole? You guys should be able to tell me now. I modeled this earlier in the video. So right hand fingers extended and joined. Thumb points follow the positive flow. Right hand fingers extended and joined. Follow the positive flow up and over on the left. This would be the end pole of an electromagnet. If we had a magnetic compass out here, what would the compass do? Well, it looks like to me that we would get north to north repulsion or north to this end being south attraction. So this compass would point towards the left. This being, if this is the north pole, this is the south pole. If we had a compass over here, it would point directly at the south pole of that homemade electromagnet. Okay, you only need to mark one and away we go. So that is an example of the uh, right-hand rule number two on paper. Let's clear the ink. Clear the ink from the page, and we'll do another one. So we'll still have our nail. We'll still have our friend, the, the nail here. And we'll now wire it differently. Now I'll have the positives over here going up and over the other end. So now it would loop like so, and it would loop like so, it would loop like so, it would, and the last lead would come from behind. On the right-hand side, follow the positive flow. This would make this the end pole of this magnet, sort of kind of the same situation, because this was the direction of the current. Okay, there's our current I. If we want to can I undo? I think I can. Yeah, let's undo a couple steps here. And if we said that I'm doing a little bit, here's our positive flow. Maybe a bad color for that. Here's our positive flow. And we go underneath, and now it winds like so. And the last turn comes down to the rest of the circuit. Now, all of a sudden, this is our follow. Now, fingers extended and joined have to go underneath this nail on the left-hand side because it's wound a different way. And now, this is the north pole of this magnet. And a compass out here would point like so, north to north repulsion, or this north to this south pole attraction. All right, likewise, a compass over here would point directly in okay all right that is basically right hand rule number two on paper